Hi, my name is Rubidium. Today we're talking about shutter speed and how you can use it to tell different, new, and more interesting stories. Shutter speed, as opposed to frame rate, is probably the least understood and least used of common camera settings. And that's a pity because it has the potential to make your footage look much more cinematic from the sharp staccato action of Saving Private Ryan or the Bourne films to the beautiful um, smudge motion of Wong Kar Wai's early Hong Kong imagery. Shutter speed has a great deal of control over your exposure and the quality of your image. Before we get into its effects on story, let's just take a little look at what um, shutter speed is. Shutter speed, also called shutter angle, has its roots in traditional celluloid film cameras. Inside a film camera, there is a rotating shutter which controls how long each piece of film, each frame of film, is exposed to the lens coming through the light before it's moved on to the next frame of film. This shutter is spun around in sync with the speed of the film passing through the gate. Early filmmakers settled on 180 degree shutter, meaning the shutter is as open as, as often as it is closed, with a 24 frames per second frame rate gives an acceptable level of blur against acceptable exposure. So 180 degree shutter has become the standard. That's what I'm shooting at here, and you can see my hands blurry. If we move up to a 50 degree shutter, in this case a 45 degree shutter, you'll see that the uh, motion blur disappears and the uh, motion becomes far more sharp edge and staccato. If we go the other direction and move to a 345 degree shutter, you see that the motion is uh, blur is much more pronounced. We're letting a lot more light into the camera and we're able to shoot at much lower light levels. A lot of the confusion about shutter speed or shutter angle lends itself to DSLRs. When digital stills cameras started shooting video, they stuck with their original shutter speed rather than shutter angle. The speed is expressed as a fraction of a second rather than a angle of degree. So a 180 degree shutter is actually 1 45th of a second, close enough to uh, 1 50th of a second. As the shutter angle gets smaller, the shutter speed gets faster. Some cameras like my Canon C200 allow you to swap between shutter angle or shutter speed depending on which you're more comfortable with. More sophisticated digital cinema cameras actually let you go beyond uh, a 360 degree shutter. They do this by leaving the shutter open over two frames. So you get uh, a very blurry um, frame of motion and it's best used for say shooting um, really dark scenes where there's not much motion like a cityscape at night. An easy way to test this is move your shutter value up. If it's, uh, if the, as the number gets bigger, it gets darker, then it's shutter speed. If as it gets bigger, it gets brighter, then it's shutter angle. This is why snappy, um, staccato-like um, action movies that use a small shutter angle are almost always daytime exteriors. It was a way for the filmmakers to let in less light, get a shallow depth of field, and get a um, punchy image. It's also why blurry wide shutter angle, like 360 and above, was used in available light spaces at night in interiors like um, subway trains or dimly lit rooms. The filmmakers picked their shutter angle as a necessity and then the stylistic and the stylistic connotations came second. Messing with shutter speed and shutter angle are a really great way to make your film look different than others out there and I encourage you to experiment with them and see what effects you get. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.